was way too nice of an introduction for someone who tells people they're full of shit for a living. <laughs> How's everyone doing so far? Well, hasn't Victor been wonderful? Give him a round of applause. And for everyone who is at the comedy show, d don't we all want to go on vacation? <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. So th thank you all for coming to my little shindig. Uh, and for everyone who's been wandering around, don't, it's, isn't, isn't Science Dog, or as we occasionally like to call him, Skeptic Dog, isn't, isn't he adorable? Uh, he's, he's occasionally giving me that eye, though, like, like Mom, really, what are we doing here? <laughs> this is, I, I don't think, why are you keep continually asking me, who's a good dog? It's, why aren't you ever going to tell me? I don't think there's an answer to this. So we all know that today is, is uh, April Fool's Day. Uh, in, in, or as you know, or as those people out there like to call it Easter. Uh, I, I'm like, I'm like the the Lord is risen. Didn't He already do that? Like, why are we doing this again this year? Is He dead again? Uh, I, that was something I never really got growing up. But do we all know what tomorrow is? It's no, it's people are like Monday. <laughs> Who are you, Simon? Does anybody know? No one. Tomorrow is my favorite holiday of the year. It's International Fact Checking Day. I love it. Does, does anybody know how I know that? I fact checked it. It's something y'all can do in your own free time, and I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to do that. Uh, but one kind of one kind of follows the other. But there there are some things that I that I love uh, about this time of the year. It's the uh, it's the one day of the year. Uh, when everybody t teaches the internet, kind of, kind of how I t uh, teach it, because uh, this is a, this is never true. This is never a thing that's going to happen. Uh, everyone, everyone kind of teaches, tr uh, 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 treats the internet like everything is always true all the time, and that's just not, not the case. The internet, the internet's just kind of a giant fuck up machine, always out there to, to teach us that things are. Things are just out there to, to let you know that, that things are always going to be a little a little wonky. Uh, but there's things are going to be false today. Things are going to be out there to get you. I've already been gotten a few times. There's already been a rickroll out there for me today. Ugh, you're always going to be gotten by that. Uh, but the Internet is just one giant fuck-up machine every day of the year. But everyone else is treating the Internet today like we treat it every day. Oh, that's the glory of April Fool's Day. Uh, but... Who else is, is kind of constantly fact-checking, constantly out there to go, that link on my Facebook timeline might not be true. Anyone? That's, that's me. Are you, who else has lost a friend because they've been like, yeah, they've been like, that's not real, that's a hoax. And you're like, I'm just trying to help you. Why is this a pro I'm just, I'm being helpful. You're, maybe. <laughs> maybe they like that squishy, happy bullshit. But you know what, I'm, I, 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 professionally do that. I've lost some friends. But uh, this is something I do for a living. I swear and do science for a living. I get yelled at a lot. But I mean, there's there's a method to my madness. I do, I like, while I'm espousing the science, I do some swearing. <gasps> That's conduct. I'm becoming someone who you expect would dress like this. Uh, but... <laughs> But there's, there's a method to this. And along with doing all the swearing, I have to make sure that I am legally defensible. Those are two words that have become a big part of my vocabulary. Uh, because while I'm doing this, I love to not get sued. Oh, those, that's the happiest. Days in which I do not get sued are great days in my life. Because if you're going to say that people are full of shit, if you're going to, if you're going to, throw down some heavy accusations in your articles on a major media platform, you have to make sure that you know your shit and it's backed the fuck up. Because uh, it's... Yeah, apparently he gets away with everything. You can, you can, you can grab him by the, I'm not going to say that word on stage because I have more manners than the president, apparently. Uh, it's, I'll call him that, but I'm not going to use the, yeah, anyways, uh, I'll say a lot of other words, but moving on, it's, but I have to make sure that my stuff is really, really legally uh, sound, uh, but there are, there are a couple different ways that we do fact checking, either on my Facebook timeline or before things are getting put into an article to make sure that they're legally sound, uh, because I'm a, I'm wrong a lot, this, 
we, we all know that I'm a know-it-all pain in the ass, uh, but in order to get to that point, I'm wrong before things get put into the article. I know this because I have, well, I just ask my mother, just ask my, <laughs> just ask my husband, ask, ask anyone who's around me before, before the stuff gets posted. We find a lot of fun and unusual ways that I'm wrong before we hit publish, and that's okay, but being, being wrong once is okay. Doubling down on being wrong will fuck up your life. <laughs> don't, don't do that. That'll, that'll keep screwing you up. But here's the thing. Embrace. Embrace the fact that you're going to be wrong. Don't embrace continuing to be wrong. And that's part of skepticism is knowing that you're going to step in it. <laughs> you're going to keep stepping in it. But be open to the new evidence. Be open to good evidence and learn how to recognize evidence. So here are a couple ways. Now, we're gonna, in, this is kind of in two parts. The first part is how I recognize bad evidence when it's on my timeline. The second is how I make sure it doesn't get into my articles. Because again, I love not getting sued. Love it. Do we have any bloggers in here? Any writers? Any people who try to get good information out to other people? Any podcasters? So as we just said from, saw from the last speech, we all know all of you are podcasters. That's, that's the new rule of the internet. If you're, if you're on the internet, along with your Twitter and Facebook account, you get a podcast. <laughs> So if some of you are putting some content out there, that's good. We need more we, we need more podcasters, we need more writers, but we also need to make sure that you don't get sued. <laughs> and that's, it's a hard thing to do because as I found, there are a lot of little pitfalls. So first let's go through how I make sure that things on my timeline are not, uh, are not false. And that's a big uh, conundrum. So this was something that we found a while ago. And we're going to go through a few political things too because that's a really easy way to see biases. But we're going to go through some sciencey things too. So. Uh, this was a wonderful thing uh, that we saw, uh, uh, I think, uh, last year, or it might have been two years ago. So this was uh, uh, Kellyanne Conway uh, just given the boot. This was uh, Liberal Society and Conservative 101. They were run by the same company. The headlines were switched just a little bit. Uh, Kellyanne Conway, uh, White House finally gives Kellyanne Conway the boot. Are you glad? Uh, White House just gave Kellyanne Conway the boot. Prepare to be infuriated. Oh, those are so similar. What, what, what happened there? And if you looked through the body of the article, they changed a few things just to, just to hit those little trigger points in your brain that would make you mad depending on what your opinions were about, about you know, poor Kellyanne or Kellyanne the hero, depending on how you looked at her. But it, it played into your biases. So there are ways that, that web, websites can use loaded language uh, to, to kind of grab at you. So it's like, you know, you can get the same bits of information, but without it telling you how to think. So try to get your, uh, your information from a place that will just tell you the facts without telling you how to think about them. And that's going to keep you uh, outside of, uh, it's going to keep you a little bit more neutral about what you're thinking about things. Um, and that's how I try to keep myself just getting some facts, trying to live a fact of your life. Uh, another thing that I see uh, fairly often that people fall for and not, uh, and getting, getting a little, little bit further away from facts, viral stories. Uh, who saw this one? It's everywhere, so it must be true. People are sharing it who are reputable. I saw this one on, on, on I Fucking Love Science. They were sharing it. I think, I think this was covered on Al Roker. This was on reputable news places. Reputable. Uh, this was all over the place. I mean, it's really easy to fall for this because Coke doesn't seem like something that's good for you. It's not a source of vitamin C goodness in unicorn blood, probably. It's, of course, this was easy to fall for. And it said, you know, none of us, none of us think this is giving us anything good for us, but it was telling you that the only reason you don't vomit it is be because of all the sugar in it is because the phosphoric acid makes you keep it down. And I'm like, you know, I've been a, I've been a child at some point in my life, probably. Uh, it's... I, I remember eating a zillion pixie sticks and not throwing them up. Somewhere in your life, when you see something like this that tells you something horrifying, think, does it tell you something that's really, really far removed from what I know about reality? If it's telling you something fear-mongering that plays into, like, you won't, sometimes we just really want to be afraid of something that we think is scary to start with. Uh, if it's telling you something that's so far removed, from what you know to be true already. And you know that sugar doesn't make you puke if you eat a bunch of pixie sticks. Or, I, or at least it hasn't done that to me yet. Uh, it's, it's probably not true. It's just playing into the, some fears that you, uh, that you think are there already. Uh, but it's, again, just because it's everywhere doesn't mean it's true. Uh, but 
these things play into what we what we suspect, what we want to be true. Who's seen? But again, we want this to be true, don't we? We would love it if this was true. Sometimes we hate if it's true. Sometimes we love if it's true. But these things play into what we want to be true. But we have to question it. Look to see what's real. Look to see what's not. Does anyone remember this? Hands. Oh yes. I'm still getting this in the in the mail sometimes. Asking, is this for real? I'm like, oh, but I wish. Uh, but this was a journalist who decided to kind of play a prank on the world and say and and say to people, look, look at what I can, look at what I can do to 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 fool people with how the media works. Uh, this was a, a biochemist um, and a journalist who just kind of played a fake study up and pee hacks the living daylights out of it and did half of a group in a low carb uh, diet, a low carb calorie controlled diet and half the group in a low carb calorie con controlled diet and also gave them a tiny little bit of chocolate <laughs> and said, let's see what we can get for data. And then at the end of it, the group that got the chocolate just happened to lose a little more weight. Two weeks, it limited group of people will get you some interesting data. Not useful data, not meaningful data, but data nonetheless. And it was really easy to get people to think that this was, it was a great headline. One, isn't that a great headline? Oh, but not useful and very easy to fool people. So again, be discerning uh, consumers of news and it will stop you from getting some alternative facts, even though, man, I do love that headline, uh, but there are other ones uh, that will that will get you. Does anyone remember the glass of wine uh, is equivalent to an hour of exercise? <laughs> oh. oh, I love this one. Everyone's got a boozy aunt Gail that loved this too. I'm okay. I'm just skipping the gym. To, this is the same as an hour at the gym. Okay, okay, this is fine. Oh. I'm just. I ran two marathons. I wish this was fucking true. All right, <laughs> so many workouts I could have missed. But everyone, we wanted this to be true. It played into all of our, all of the things that we really, really were hoping was true. Uh, but man, if this was true and so was the chocolate things, these people would be health nuts. <laughs> Pro I'm just saying probably not true. But when you see something like that, how, how, do you, how do you fact check it? Come on. You find the original study. So for this one, I went and hunted it down because what they were doing, and I suspected because one of, one of the things I always toss around when we were saying, oh, look, alcohol is good for you because alcohol is a carcinogen, um, is they're always talking about there's, the resveratrol in the red wine. So I hunted down the study, and it was a researcher trying to see, can we get anything really good out of resveratrol? You needed the resveratrol from between 100 and 1,000 bottles of red wine uh, in order to get any of the effects <laughs> that you would get uh, from from uh, from drinking to mimic the effects of exercise, and I'm like, I think you might get a touch of a hangover by that point. <laughs> it's, I, I, I'm not a drinker, but I I seem to recall when I was <laughs> that this uh, that that might not work out for you. So everyone just kind of shared the headline because it looks good, and that didn't really uh, give anyone any good information. There's another place that I see uh, bad news being shared around, and it's often when people confuse uh, correlation with causation. And there are a few different places that we see this. Uh, I often see it with, with link to, I see people sharing really preliminary studies that they'll say correlated to, and they're like, whoa, we obviously have a health crisis on our hands. But the easiest way that I can demonstrate this is that we have to have a talk about Nicolas Cage. <laughs> no laughing matter, people, Nicolas Cage is up to some shit. Because Nicolas Cage films, whenever he's filming more movies, the number of people who die by drowning and by falling into a swimming pool goes up. Whenever he has more films, Florida men, oh, those Florida men, they, uh, their, their deaths by slipping and tripping to their deaths, they go up. So this proves definitively that Nicolas Cage is a wizard. <laughs> so I, I'm just saying, I get it, that there is a natural suspicion uh, about correlations. However, and they are a good launching point to do research. <laughs> However, I. Even, even though Nicolas Cage is, an, is a character, probably not a wizard. Maybe, but we should keep our eye on him just in case. But from here, let's go into, <laughs> let's go into uh, some, some interesting stuff from an article I wrote last year, uh, because this was kind of where, uh, where some, now uh, how many of you guys got a chance to come to the workshop 
uh, on uh, on Thursday. So some of this information you're going to you're going to see once again, but it's going to be in condensed form. Uh, but there is a we so last year we wrote an article on David Wolf, and there were some some interesting things that we learned that fact checking is very it's very different for an article than it is when you're just trying to make sure you know suss something out in your timeline. So. Uh, this was the first time that I saw something from David Wolf that I just uh, on on Twitter that I just went, "Fuck you!" Uh, there's no way. It's by the way, if harsh language offends you, I, I can't control this. It's just going to keep coming. Uh, but I saw that, and I was my first reaction was, "There's no way in hell. There's nothing in this. It's going to be true." You went to law school. Somebody let went the, let this guy into law school, and I just flat out thought, "There's no way." Uh, and there were more bits of things from him. So that was just Twitter. On his website, uh, this was listed. And there were a few things that kind of pinged my BS detector on this. Uh, and it wasn't just uh, that th there was kind of a mismatch from what he'd said on Twitter. And I get it. At the time, Twitter was still 140 characters. So there was more room for him to list off some craziness. But there were a few things that kind of pinged me on this. Uh, one was that he said, Juris Doctor in Law. And if anyone, I'm sure we have some lawyers in the audience, you can't get a Juris Doctor in anything else. <laughs> That's what a JD is. You, it's, it, it, it's, 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 I, I don't know, I'm sure there's an apt uh, uh, metaphor for somebody else here. It's, it's like saying that you had an RN in nursing. <laughs> like, that's, that's what they're for. Um, but a master's in living food nutrition, that's not a, like, living food nutrition isn't really a degree. The only uh, uh, certified, the only really recognized degree in, in dietetics in this country uh, is a registered dietitian. Um, and there's, like, the other thing that seemed very uh, um, open-ended for, uh, for that was he has studied at many institutions, including Oxford University. Why didn't you just say, I got this degree from Oxford? Uh, so that all seemed kind of, to me. So we had a very long, and I'm, I'm going into a few of the notes that we went back. The next handful of slides are, they're going to be going back and forth with a bunch of notes that we went through with editors. So you're going to be seeing what I do behind the scenes at SciBabe to get stuff ready before it comes out to you. So sorry or you're welcome. <laughs> uh, but this was the longest back and forth we'd ever had for one sentence. So when we were trying to figure out what we could do to clarify one of these degrees, we hunted down uh, at, uh, at one of his undergrad uh, degrees, because he said he had three undergrad degrees, mechanical, um, uh, environmental, and political science for his undergrad degrees. We reached out to his undergrad, because um, that's, you know, that's, you can reach out, clarify degrees, that's, that's fairly standard. Like, you claim something, I'm a fact check your life. Uh, and we, we reached out and checked, and it said that he only had poli-sci and mechanical, and that seemed kind of weird that he would claim the extra degree. So our fact checker, who, I, I have to tell you, this isn't just a me effort. This is an editor, a legal team, uh, and, and uh, an am, like, amazing uh, fact checker that makes sure that everything is good before it comes out to, uh, to press. Our fact checker goes and checks what the university had offered at the time. It turned out the department was called the Department of Mechanical and Environmental Engineering at the time. So she's like, wait, was there any chance the degree had a different name? This is how careful we have to be. Um, so we contacted uh, both the department at the university and the registrar's office. Uh, the department, there's nobody left of the department from the 90s <laughs> who still works there can clarify this. The registrar's office says there's nobody, uh, there's nobody still there uh, from the time, but degrees that were granted from forever ago that have changed, uh, that are no longer offered, still have the same name in their system, and there's no reason to believe uh, that this degree would have a different name now. That he, that, so he should have the same exact degree in their system that he was granted, but there's still that shred of doubt that he might have that degree on his wall that has a different name that's in their system. And I love not getting sued. Uh, so we're sat sitting there with that conundrum that, that we have that still, you know, we're 99.999% sure. But again, what do you do for the wording? Uh, and how do you still make it clear that David Wolf is a fucking asshole? Uh, so, and I mean, there are all these other things that went wrong with that. Like the Oxford thing, we contacted Oxford. They found uh, proof that one David Wolf had attended there once. He attended a weekend course that anyone could attend for no credit, and he didn't complete it. <laughs> he, he has his Juris Doctor. He's never been admitted to the bar. Like, he's, 
his master's in living food nutrition, it was from basically a mail-away university. He's an asshole. Uh, but, you know, we wanted, to, we wanted to make sure that people understood this, but still leave that shred of doubt. So here's what we went with. Um, a search on the school's website does not show the environmental component of the degree. Ah, it leaves it open to the fact that he still has it. Um, he's an intelligent person, but the answer of if he's been up front can be answered, uh, the question of if he's been up front can be answered with a big farting noise. <laughs> this is how we do this. We kind of make sure that we're, we're leaving it open to the fact that it's there, but with a big old farting noise. So there are ways that we get around these things uh, without, without completely uh, closing the door on this. So there are interesting ways that, we, that I, I differ between how I do a blog entry and how I do um, an article. And the fact checking is much lighter uh, for a blog entry and, and, and an article. So a blog entry um, is kind of, you know, make sure that <laughs> it's <laughs> true story. Gandhi said that. I saw it on the internet. Um, <laughs> saw it on the internet, so it's true. Um, but, you know, you kind of make sure that you have a working narrative. Uh, do a light fact check, make sure that everything you link to is linked to an accurate source, that they uh, seem to have the information that you want there, that they're not, that you're not linking to natural news, that you're linking to places that you would want to click on if you're, uh, or that I would want to click on if I'm going to a website and I want them uh, reputable, and that you have a working narrative. Maybe I'll send them off to my regular editor, uh, maybe not, and that, you know, they're, they're, they're funny and informative. Uh, but when I do something for, uh, for, my, for one of the websites I work on, it's much, uh, uh, it's a little bit crazier. I mean, that, that picture is basically what I look like uh, at the end of my blog entries. Like, this is not a, a setup for the wedding. This is my, my hair after I come back from Narnia for the blog entries. This is just a, a, an extraneous little hair piece from that. But this is, a, like, we go back and forth between three different, uh, th three different uh, places. So it's me that, like, first I'll pitch back and forth with my, uh, with my primary editor. Uh, we go back and forth between copy edit, um, our, our editor-in-chief half the time, uh, legal and fact-checking. So our, this is, uh, do we have any John Oliver fans in here? I hope so. It's, like, John Oliver is, like, watching porn for me. Oh. It's, because part of it, like, our website, one of the websites I write for, we have the same uh, uh, law firm as they do. So I know how hard they work to make sure that things are, are legally ready uh, to go. Because I'll see them, you know, uh, work around the, the wording that you have to do to make sure that you're not going to get sued. And it's like all the times that they're like, seems like, apparently, allegedly, in my opinion. And I'm like, ah, you have a thing that you're absolutely sure is true and you just can't say it because you like not getting your, all your possessions taken away by a lawyer. Uh, but that's how carefully you have to go around these things. Uh, but there's, there are a handful of little differences between the types of fact checking that you do that will kind of get things ready uh, if not a ton of people are going to see it, like on my blog and if I'm publishing in a major media source. So, you know, I'm, everything that I write is always backed up. Uh, but when I have an external source making sure that, you know, keeping me honest, checking to make sure that my sources say what I say that they do, oh, it's, it's great to have a second set of eyes on things. Um, like, making an accurate statement is good, but making sure that those statements uh, have been picked through to, to see if they can prove them wrong, so much better. Um, I always try to make sure that I have, uh, ha have a couple of experts come out and give a statement uh, for some of my articles, even some of my blog entries. But uh, getting, reaching out to the person that we're writing about and trying to get a statement from them, even if, <laughs> even if they hate me, that's <laughs> like, they don't often respond, but getting, reaching out to them for a statement is absolutely necessary to keep myself in the clear. Um, there, and there is always a slight difference between using accurate and using legally defensible language. Because I, be, I can be accurate, but I'd like to be legally defensible too. Uh, but there are, it's, there's, and it always comes down to the case of, it's true, but can I prove it? Uh, so it's, if people are, fami people are familiar here for the most part with David Avocado Wolf. He has uh, 12 million followers. And it's been said a bunch of times that he gets most of those followers from sharing his adorable little bullshit memes. Because uh, he'll, he'll spread these happy little easily uh, shareable, you know, happy little quotes, happy little quotes. I would love to go off into the forest with just Wi-Fi and a bunch of squirrels. Uh, you know, whatever his thing of the day is. And then he's like, every single vaccine is an attempt to kill your child. Like, whatever his thing of the day is that he's on a tangent about. Uh, that people may basically find him via his memes. I've yet to meet a single person who actually loves and, you know, is a huge fan of the guy. And my editor called me out on this, and then I realized I was 
giving a little bit of special pity. I'm like, no, really, we know this to be true. And then I'm like, I can't actually prove this. This is not a thing that I can put in print uh, or else I'm going to get sued for this. So I'm even, uh, I, I'm capable of, uh, of, of screwing up and throwing something into print uh, that can easily uh, get, my, uh, get, get my ass sued. So this is why a thorough fact check before things go to print is, uh, is, is hugely uh, necessary or else this stuff is all, is the type of thing that can get you um, uh, that, that can lose you your writing career because we found out as we were writing this, he is prone to suing people. Uh, and this is something that if you've seen the article, uh, very unfortunately quite common. So moving quite, uh, moving, I'll just go right along. Uh, before, and here's the other thing, before writing the article, so is it, who here is familiar with Brit Marie Hermes, uh, The Naturopathic Diaries? It's, who here is familiar with the fact that a naturopath is probably a bullshit doctor? <laughs> ah. There you go. So you should be familiar with Britt Marie Hermes. So Britt started the Naturopathic Diaries when, as a naturopath, she realized she uh, was in a profession that was peddling uh, bullshit, and she started speaking out against uh, naturopathy, which was which was wonderful. She's kind of a she's a hero. She's done some amazing work, uh, but unfortunately, she has been as this has happened to several bloggers in her sphere, and this is the reason why I keep bringing this up. A lot of people that work in our sphere have been sued, have been hit with cease and desist orders, and it's because of not working carefully around the legal language. Uh, it's very easy to accidentally uh, libel someone, and sometimes people are hit with slap suits, uh, which are basically, I'm going to hit you with so many lawsuits that you can't keep writing. Uh, but sometimes, I mean, she writes in Germany where the uh, defamation suits, or the defamation law is a little bit different. And in our country, luckily, we do have the First Amendment for now, um, and it's it's, it's a thing where you do have to be careful about how you write about someone depending on how high profile they are, what their behavior has been uh, on public social media. Like when I write about someone who I know is really litigious, I'm much more careful. Uh, if, they're, uh, if, if they're really high profile, if they're somebody who I know uh, is going to cause a bigger splash, I'm much more careful. Uh, if they're somebody who's erratic with their behavior and they tend to lash out at people, I'm really fucking careful uh, with how I write about them. Like, you do have to take these types of things into account if you, t if you take a really big swing at someone. And it's unfortunate uh, that this is how, how it works. Like, I'll go into, into every last bit of wording and not just try to make something uh, legally accurate, but try to make it to the point where they can't uh, take anything out of context. <laughs> Uh, to be used against them. So it's, it's unfortunate that we have to get to this point uh, with our writing, but given that really good uh, advocates for critical thinking have been attacked to this point, if, and if you can, donate to Brit's Legal Defense Fund because she has, uh, has been really, really fighting this uh, for a while, and it's unfortunate. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate to have been watching, but, you know, sourcing, uh, but uh, onto this really quickly, uh, we've uh, different types of writing, different types of citations. So, uh, who do we have any academics in the audience? Any scientists in the audience? Any journalists in the audience? So, different things need different sourcing. Like, if you're writing, because I'm working on a novel, uh, anything that I pull from uh, gets a citation. When I'm writing for uh, for a, a blog entry, anything that I pulled a quote from gets um, get, gets a, a citation. When I'm writing for an article. It depends on what I need for the blog entry, if I can trust it, if it's a source. So different things can be used for sources at different times. And that's something we're going to get into a little bit more. But sourcing is a really, really tricky thing. Uh, there are times when I won't uh, sort, like there are times when I won't cite to something because people won't trust it. There are times when I uh, will cite to things that are weaker sources if I have a bunch of them. Uh, and it's really, really tricky how you source to things. Uh, so a citation is not, when people say citation needed, a citation is not a citation, is not a citation. Uh, so there, it's a tricky little uh, universe uh, to, to work through. So I know that when I put this one up on the board, there are going to be people who are like, I don't trust that one that's in the good column, or why is that in the needs critical review column? But uh, I know I, I met someone recently who said, the New York Times, I don't trust that one anymore after one bad article. Uh, all of these are not monoliths, is the, is the thing that... Um, no matter which place you're at, there are going to be different editors, there are going to be different writers. Uh, there, uh, there are writers over at some of the ones that are, that are over, into the far, uh, over into the far needs critical review column that I love those writers and will follow them, even if I think as a whole they're a flaming dumpster uh, pile. 
but there's, uh, you need to look really, really carefully at any uh, bit that you're looking at from any of them to see uh, if they've missed the mark. So uh, anything, whether they're generally credible, uh, credible or not, check to see if they meet uh, standards for reputability because just because a place is generally credible doesn't mean they can't miss the mark. But generally there are places that I trust more than others uh, and will and we'll, you know, not look through every reference that they've used uh, before using them in an article. But you know, meta-analyses better than uh, double-blind trials, better than case studies, uh, and there are places that you can trust a little bit more than others when you're using uh, their references. Uh, but then we have, as I like to call it, the broken, uh, the broken clock conundrum. Who remembers this? We can't, we can't all have forgotten this one. <laughs> Once in a while, you have a place like, uh, like the Inquirer that breaks a big story. Do you use a place like this for, and I mean, <laughs> not the, uh, the Inquirer specifically, but you know, when a place, uh, like, because I mean, I write about GMOs and really, really far right-wing places will write, uh, pr will heap praise on GMOs occasionally. Do I, if they write a good story, do I use that in a piece? Do I post about it on my website? Do I, do I give them air and advertising money uh, to support my piece? Or will that lose my piece of credibility? Will my followers uh, not, uh, you know, say that loses me credibility and it will lose everything I'm writing credibility. And that's a problem that I come up with as a journalist and as somebody who's trying to get people to engage with science. So something to think about when you're looking at, uh, you know, at the type of stuff that I'm writing and thinking why, you know, like it's, I get people sending me stuff on a regular basis go, and probably thinking why isn't this going up? Sometimes it's because I know that people won't think a source is credible or a, an article is credible uh, just because of the sourcing. So there's something that comes up on a regular basis. Quite unfortunately. And here's one of my favorite points that comes up on a regular basis. Uh, it's, the, it's the anybody can say eat shit, Bob, as, a, as said by the ACLU. Uh, you can indeed, <laughs> you can swear all you want at anyone, and all they're going to do is say, oh, you're giving me the vapors. Uh, but indeed, you can keep swearing. <laughs> Nobody can stop you. Uh, but as long as you are not, uh, not slandering someone, and swearing doesn't count as slander, uh, it's just, it's just not very nice, and I never claim to be nice. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of a life ruiner when I get working. Uh, but here's the thing, swearing, it's, it's, my, my girlfriends are laughing because they know me. Um, but like, my, my point in all of these, Victor's holding up the time card. Um, but my, my point in all of these is to make sure that at the end of this, uh, they, they don't get to sell their bullshit anymore. Uh, it's not to be nice. But uh, you can swear, you just can't be inaccurate. So, uh, moving on. Uh, when I wrote the article on David Avocado Wolf, it was called David Wolf is the biggest asshole in the, in the universe, or in the multiverse. This is more accurate, because writing about him legally was a challenge, because uh, we had a lot of issues uh, with him. Now, he likes to present himself as a longevity expert. Uh, one of those pictures is the pictures he has on his website to show himself as young and youthful, and the other one is a more recent picture. I'm just saying moisturizer and Botox works a lot better <laughs> than what he's doing. Uh, because it's strange that this is, like, there, and this is kind of gets to the heart of what I do, is uh, be mean about people's looks, obviously. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, but it's this, it's, we try to see how people present themselves and what's behind the scenes and what people don't want uh, shown. And I always do this through, you know, obviously legal means, but going through what I can find through publicly available information. And I try not to go after people's appearances, but we're here, and I have a PowerPoint. Uh, but to be to be fair, this is me with 18 pounds of makeup, and that's me uh, not. So <laughs> that's I'll find David. I'll give you one. I don't always look like this. So moving moving swiftly onwards. So there were some things we didn't include in the article that couldn't make it in because, like I said, we always ask the question of what we can and can't prove. Um, there were some much more damning things that didn't make it in, uh, either for time or for relevance. Uh, one of the things, we had information on David Wolf's family. Uh, his father killed his stepmother. <gasps> oh, scandal. That was crazy. I found that out and I'm like, oh man, this is going to get good. Um, his, uh, his brother was in jail for financial crimes. He just comes from a family of morally questionable people. Um, he was, we thought he was a moon landing denialist, but we couldn't quite prove it enough. Like, that's, like when that's your crazy stuff, like the, the stuff that makes it in is still pretty good. Um, there was, he sells raw chocolate and that's like one of his big businesses. He owns a chocolate farm, sells raw chocolate. Um, and there were, 
it said, even on its website, uh, that some of the chocolate is, uh, might be thermally treated before it makes it to the processing plant. And I'm like, in other words, it's not raw, is it? <laughs> but, you know, we, and there were websites debunking uh, the raw thing, but it just didn't seem like firm enough evidence. We're really careful about all this stuff. Um, there were, uh, we did some, a little bit of a dive into the stuff that happened during his, uh, his time as a reality star. And I highly recommend going back and watching Mad Mad House. Oh, it's a doozy. Um, and there were, uh, there were some pictures that we got from one of our anonymous sources that used to work with him. And we opted not to put that into the article, but that doesn't mean I won't share it here. I <laughs> never said I was nice. Um, but moving, moving swiftly onwards. So here are a few things that we opted to debunk. Uh, so there were, uh, there were some raw foods, there was a raw foods book that he wrote when he first busted out. And it seemed, now the one uh, with the more uh, graphic cover is, uh, is an older book. Um, from you can see at the bottom, uh, uh, um, it's in Tehran. There was, an other, there was another author uh, that wrote this book back in the 70s, and he kind of lifted it word for word. It was, it was just called Raw Eating. They renamed it Nature's First Law Change. They kind of cosmetically changed a few uh, bits of writing and just lifted it with no acknowledgement. And after many years and a lot of, you know, within, <laughs> within the raw foods movement, so I don't know how much pressure you get within a tiny movement to change what you've done, but they, uh, they put a lot of pressure on Wolf to, uh, to eventually add an acknowledgement. But we had to hunt to figure out how to, uh, to accuse someone of plagiarism because originally we had this tiny little bit of, of thing on it saying he had, uh, he, he had uh, lifted entire books. And my editor said, you know, since you said he's regularly accused of plagiarism, can you get a lot of proof of this? So indeed we did. Uh, we went back uh, to, to find every place on the internet where he'd been accused of it, every source that possibly found, because we had weak sources. We didn't have like an Amazon books thing of the original book because it was made, <laughs> it, was, it was made in Tehran in the 70s. Like we couldn't find an original copy of the book. Um, so we're, it, was, it was hard to, hard to sus suss out. We found our, our source that we used for the article. It was an old associate of, of Wolf's gave us a PDF of it uh, and a couple of copies of the cover. And we found a few side-by-side -side, uh, links to, uh, to, to debunk, or to show people here's what they look like next to each other. Uh, here was something interesting. So, we, uh, so Wolf likes to, sh to, to promote the possibility that there are cancer cures being covered up uh, by Big Pharma. Uh, and one of them was apricot pits, saying these actually cure cancer. Wouldn't that be great? An all natural, really cheap cure. So we pointed out that yes, they have cyanide in them that could you know, possibly hurt you. And my editor uh, asked, you know, could these, you know, is, is there, there actually enough cyanide in them to hurt you? Because like apple seeds have cyanide, but there's not enough in them to, unless you chew them up, uh, to hurt you. But you have to grind up the apricot seeds. So it, as it turned out, in a way to keep ourselves legally uh, in the clear, was to point out that indeed these are a public health crisis elsewhere. So not only is he giving possibly dangerous advice, he's giving advice that's causing, he's telling people to, uh, to follow uh, advice that's causing a public health issue in another country, which that's some fucked up shit, I'm just saying. So this kept us really, really legally in the clear and made a point that he's, uh, that he's acting dangerously. Uh, so that, that really, really helped us out uh, on that. So again, with the raw uh, chocolate thing, we did want to make a point about the raw chocolate, but since we really couldn't make a strong enough one about the chocolate not being raw, uh, we made the point that he was trying to present these things as kind of a health elixir, a breakthrough in longevity technology uh, with all the exact same calories as a Hershey's bar for $11. So this was an easier way, a much safer legally uh, way uh, to, to debunk this ridiculous chocolate bar that I'm, you know, I'm curious if it tastes good, but still, uh, like, it was an easier way to do this. It kept us legally in the clear. So you always, as much as you want to go really, really hard on someone every single time, you do have to keep the possibility of the fact that you're going to get slapped upside the head with a lawsuit uh, in your purview when you're writing these things. So a few uh, last little things. So I do, um, uh, before, we're, before Victor yanks me off the stage or before uh, David Silverman jumps off on it, whichever. Uh, so I promise I'm almost done. So 
we've done an article about chiropractic and chiropractors uh, in general because it was it was all launched on the theory that cracking backs can fix all your health. It's not they're not fixing your back. They think you're they're fixing everything else by fixing your back. And a lot of them don't believe in germ theory or genetics. Uh, and because of that, uh, but there's no uh, there's no one unifying board that runs all of chiropractic. Some of them don't believe this. So we had different links uh, that showed. That, you know, that, that had things saying we don't do germ theory, we don't do genetics, but we didn't have one board. So in order to support uh, the, you know, the supposition that they don't do genetics and don't do germ theory, we linked out to a couple different places. One, a, a semi, it's, that's pretty much what happens at a Cairo's office. Just take my word for it. I'm, I'm a person on the internet. Uh, but we found, we found a fairly large chiropractic board and a reputable uh, op office to link to and said, you know, chiropractic practitioners have been known, not as opposed to all chiropractors. And that, again, keeps you legally in the clear and makes the point, this is, uh, you know, this comes from a reputable board. This comes from a, a reputable chiropractic office. Anyways, a couple other ones. Oh, Gwyneth Paltrow, how I love her, like, a, like an anvil to the face. Um, now, she, uh, she's, now, here's the thing. She sells sunscreen. Good, she's selling something that works. Uh, however, uh, the sunscreen, now this is interesting. She said, I don't see how the sun can be bad for you, and she sells sunscreen. I'm, you know what, I'm, for once she does something good, I'm not going to yell at her too much for it. Uh, however, the sunscreen she sells, uh, because it has to be organic, biodynamic, blessed by her vagina, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it costs, it costs $54 for 1.7 ounces, and to cover one child, you need an ounce. <laughs> I, ch children, children tend to be sticky and get wet and go in the water, and they need a lot of ounces of sunscreen for a day of running around. So and, uh, instead of debunking the mineral versus chemical or saying that it's bad for you, I just said, I just went for the economics and said that this was a very silly thing to do and her stuff is overpriced bullshit. This was an easier way to go about it. Sometimes, again, instead of, instead of going after all the other things with her, uh, it's sometimes easier to point out that they are just trying to make money, especially, again, especially when she said the sun is, uh, is not going to hurt you. Um, so Himalayan, Himalayan song. It's my, I, I've ar I'm already married, Victor. <laughs> Uh, so again, uh, uh, la last one. So Himalayan salt. Who's heard this one? Who's who's bought the? It's who who has? You're amongst. All right. Who has a friend with the Himalayan salt lamp? <laughs> you're you're amongst. You're you're all invited to my wedding. You can't. I'm not going to judge you. Uh, so so anyways, I had heard the 84 elements thing so many times. I was like, I'm on a mission, and I'm going to find out where this bullshit came from. Uh, so here's the thing, 84 elements doesn't necessarily mean better, because polonium's a fucking element. Um, so I looked it up, and I, I found out we couldn't even find, the institute that claimed to have made the study that said that we had uh, 84 elements in this, the institute didn't even, ex we couldn't even find proof that the institute ever existed. <laughs> so normally when you find, we found the study, there were no methods, there was no equipment, there was nothing. Uh, and you'd said that there was every, like it just had a list of elements that they kind of sort of maybe detected. Uh, so eventually, the better than this, we did find, and we also couldn't uh, figure out if it was actually mined from the Himalayan mountains. <laughs> We don't think it is, though, because uh, no one can figure out how a map works. Uh, however, uh, last, and again, if there's, th I just think it's interesting that people are like, there are more elements, so it's better. But again, Food Babe likes to say there's no acceptable level of any chemical ever. Just pointing that out. Uh, but last but not least, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, we did find the study that showed you exactly how many, let's, that, I, I, that makes me laugh too much. Heart, uh, moving, moving on. We did find a study that showed exactly what's in Himalayan salt, because if you can find a bullshit study, you can find a better study to undo it. Uh, there are, give or take, five elements that are in that salt uh, that, that do give it that glow. Uh, it's rust, really, that gives it the color. And there's also lead in it. Trace below the amount, not as much as what's in the Flint, Michigan water, uh, but you... More elements does not necessarily mean it's a health elixir. Just to just to remind you of that. So, uh, finish wrapping this all up. Remember, you can always fact check. You can always look. Treat everything you read on the internet like a monkey, like a monkey at a typewriter wrote it, and you're hardly ever gonna gonna be screwed up. Remember, tomorrow's International Fact Checking Day. Treat it like it's still April Fool's Day because every day on the internet is April Fool's Day. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Yeah.